Hi folks, I've done several reviews of the Savage Bobber in various configurations. In this final chapter of my reviews, I install a 1S 4 channel micro receiver with onboard ESC, which will pair with my FlySky transmitter. In my previous video, I converted the Savage Bobber to 1S using the old radio gear from my F949. Although it had gyro, I was limited to rudder and elevator only, and I had the rubbish transmitter that came with the F949, so it, it limited the flying capabilities. However, in this configuration, I have ailerons, rudder and elevator, with the micro receiver I've bought here. You might ask, why did I convert the Savage Bobber from 2S to 1S? Well, I thought if I converted to 1S, the Savage Bobber would weigh a little bit less, and therefore fly a little bit better. Let's find out how I get on with this final test. I bought a 4 channel receiver with AFHDS 2A protocol which pairs with my FlySky transmitter with onboard ESC and 1mm JST connector sockets. It's an MA RX42 A 2.4G from AliExpress and it came in at under $25 including postage. This tiny receiver just about fits on my thumbnail. I also bought a 10 pack of male and female JST 1mm connectors. I just had to solder on a connector for the battery and another connector for the brushless motor. I also bought a couple of 2 gram servos with 1mm JST plugs on them. This is for the rudder and elevator. I connected everything up with a fine tip soldering iron. Everything bench tested ok until I connected up the ailerons in a wire configuration. Now the wires and plug that I got from AliExpress had swapped the red with the black so when I connected it up it nearly cooked the receiver. Fortunately I had some information on this and I was able to connect it up correctly and get it all working on the bench. This is how it should be wired up. I installed the radio gear in the bobber and did some thrust tests and this is how it came out. Now, I was expecting the bobber to be lighter with the 1S configuration. However, somehow over time, the Savage bobber has gained a bit of weight. And this is probably due to the bits and pieces I've added to it. Like the tissue on the body, which is an essential strengthening part. And also the heavy engine mount that I've made with the 1020 motor. This brought the dry weight of the Savage bobber to about 105 grams, which was 5 grams heavier than it used to be. Here is a table of the static thrust and weight with the three 1S batteries that I used with the Savage Bobber. This is roughly the same as I had with the F949 receiver and the 500 million power battery, but about 6 to 8 grams less for the smaller and the larger batteries. Could be the ESC or the long wires that I've used to connect up the motor. So I'd expect roughly the same performance as my last flight test, except this time I'm going to have a much better transmitter and I'll have add-ons as well as rudder and elevator. Let's see how the Savage Bobber went in the field. I am here at the park to try out the 4 channel 1S conversion of my Savage Bobber. No takeoff from the ground today. So I had to settle for a hand launch. I got a bit of attention from the local bird life, but that later on settled down. With the 500 million power battery, there was enough power to keep it in the air. But it wasn't that exciting to fly. This is the bobber throwing a tantrum. We'll try the 800 million pound battery now. I got a good long flight from the 800 million pound battery, but I never felt completely comfortable. And if I attempted any sort of aerobatics, it felt like it was going to be unstable afterwards. I guess my hopes of the bobber floating around the sky in a nice stable fashion after reducing the weight and simplifying it to 1S uh, are now gone. 
So I guess this is probably the last flights I'll have with this little airframe before I uh, decide what I'm going to do with it next. How successful was this final experiment? Well, I managed to test out my new 4-channel micro receiver in the Savage Bobber. The Bobber did fly with 1S, however, it's not a very efficient fly and glider. Also, I didn't build it particularly straight, so I think I'll relegate this airframe to a static display from now on. What's next for Days Fun RC? Well, I recently made a trip to New Zealand to visit the aeronautical engineer in the family. He gave me all sorts of gin on how to build planes from scratch. I've been gathering plans and building tools and getting ready to build some new planes of my own. So, stay tuned to see how that goes. Bye for now.